Welcome to Time to Teach with Tammy, the podcast that gives tips, advice, and suggestions to teachers by your real teacher. So sit back and enjoy, and oh yeah, don't forget to subscribe. We're back. Welcome to episode 82 of Time to Teach. Today's episode is entitled, What Can I Do Today for Tomorrow? So in today's episode, we're really going to be um, exploring some of the things we can do at the end of the school year just to help get ready for the following year. Just a few things, nothing really novel, um, but sometimes I know it helps me to kind of brainstorm. I found this to be Um, a really good exercise in me kind of like writing down those things and then that's going to help me so I can get set up for next school year and just implement um, a few things now and I think it's always nice when you can prepare things a little bit in advance it just makes getting started so much easier not to send school things I like to do that with my life like prepare the coffee the night before Um, all those things that you need to do if you think what can I do today to make my tomorrow a little bit easier it's just helpful so um, that is what we are going to be talking about so if you're interested in that topic I encourage you to join us Um, before really diving into this I will say I'm hoping to keep today's episode a little shorter than normal Um, we actually have guests coming today and I'm looking at the time and thinking that I could have better managed my time because I'm running low on it Um, so because of that I will probably just really try to keep this um, short and sweet I also do want to remind you that it's the end of the school year and time to teach is going to be going on summer break I really haven't decided officially when that's going to happen. I'm actually recording at a super busy time in my teacher life. Um, So I'm actually at the end and meeting deadlines, but by the time this episode publishes, I will have met my deadlines and we'll still have another couple of weeks of school. So I'll be going into a less busy time. So all of that is to say, I just don't know. I haven't quite planned, but I do know that the final episode will probably be airing here soon. And then I might do bonus episodes in the summer. I don't know. We'll see. But um, Time to Teach will absolutely be back by the fall for season three. That means year three. So that is exciting. Um, but anyway, already three minutes in. I don't know. I, maybe I'm, maybe this won't be short. But in any case, I think we need to get started. Okay, so um, like I said, just kind of looking at what can I do today to get things ready for tomorrow. So I kind of made a list and thought about what are things that I like to do? What are things that I need to do to help prepare me um, for today's episode? So one of the things I thought about that really helps me is thinking about the things that I like to do with my students um, the first week of school. So one of the things that I always do is kind of prepare an ABC book. Now, this is a book that they will eventually write, but it's basically just a blank book um, with, you know, I put... 13 white pages in and then I just fold it in half to make 26. By the way, if you hear strange sounds, that's my cat. She was playing with my sandals. I don't know what's going on, people. Um, anyway, so I like to, that's something I do. So as we go through the alphabet at the beginning of the year, we think about words. Um, with those letters, I just have the kids create it, but it's nice to just have that booklet already done prepared and ready to go. It's just one little thing that I can do that makes life so much easier. Um, I also do, I don't know if you've ever heard the story, No, No, Bono, but um, that's one that I read those 
that first week of school as we kind of look at school rules and appropriate behaviors. So it's just one that I have online. Um, I don't know, maybe from teacher, teachers pay teachers. I don't even know at this point, but this is a printable, but then I have to reprint um, so that I have um, one copy for myself that I read and then a copy because then I give one to each student. Um, sorry, not one full copy, but one page of the book and then we put it together to create a book. And then I do, a, like there's a mini book version that I found online and um, I do give one of those to each of my students and I and I give that to them when I introduce their book box and how to use their book box and how they'll you know keep books in their book boxes um, and that's the first one that goes in there so um, just having that is super great and just helps to like really expedite what I need to do when I'm really in the first week of school. Um, and then just really anything that you can think of, like, what do I usually do at the beginning of the school year? What are things that I can do right now? One thing that I do is, um, um, kudos to one of our teachers from last year, Lauren, um, she kind of introduced this to us and I, I love what the teachers always bring, you know, every teacher brings something, um, so she introduced poetry binders and, you know, I've been using that this year. So we just like introduce a poem every week and the kids keep that in their binder and they keep the binder in their book box and then they can go back. It just really helps with fluency. They also can look up their, their, um, high frequency words, which we call snap words. There's so much you can do with it. And, um, it's, no, it's just been a wonderful tool but I have to collect these back for my kiddos this year. And then I just like to go through, they'll take their poems home, but I like to go through those poems. Um, sorry, they're those binders and just clean them up and make sure I, I've stopped putting names on things that I reuse. Every student has a number. So I just put the number cause I know I'll have a student with that number next year. Um, and then I don't have to worry about changing out labels every year, but I do have to double check and just make sure is, is that label still looks good. Should I replace the label? Um, and do the same thing with those poetry binders. Also clean, just get them cleaned up if they need any cleaning up, any anything fixed on those binders. So yeah, that's something that I like to do. Um, also the first week of school, I have my kids do like an all about me book. And that's like one of the first things they do when they first come in, you know, they're little, it's their first year in elementary. They're terrified. They come in with their mom and dad. I have them find a seat, like find your desk, um, put your things away and then start working on a sheet that I have left out. And it's like, what's your favorite, I don't know, food or whatever. And every day there's a different page that they add to it and they're kind of making a book um, for them, all about them. So um, I like to get those things ready and then just make the copy. So I have it ready. It's just one less thing I have to do in August when I go back to school. So not it's not a big thing, but I think we win, we win big when we do, when we can tackle many small things in advance. That's my motto. Just kidding. Literally never said that before, but it's what just what I do. It's just how I live without saying it. If that makes any sense. Um, so let's see. The other thing I like to do is um, I haven't always done this. I didn't like to do it, but then I kind of went back to doing it is like an all about me poster. A lot of younger grades do this. So this also probably is not going to sound novel or um like, wow, tell me how'd you come up with this idea? It's amazing. Um, everyone and their brother does it, but um, it is just kind of a nice way as you're building community, the kids are kind of learning appropriate behaviors, learning rules and procedures, just doing one of these easy things and all about me poster. And then I like to use that as like our first bulletin board. Um, so it, it's, you know, multi-purpose. So I like to get those copies made and ready to go. Um, it just, again, makes life a little bit simpler. So that's definitely something that I will be 
getting going. Um, those were the first things that really popped through my head. I feel like I'm probably missing a lot, but what I'm going to do, and I really suggest anyone listening, and really if you're not listening, you should just do this, but maybe you won't know to do it, um, is go through your first week of school plans. If you've been teaching the same grade and uh, over and over, obviously that makes it easier. Um, I can't remember all those wonderful things that I do the first week of school, but I know I have those plans. I know I tweak them year to year, but I know those main things that I keep that have just proven to be really good things to do every year. So that's going to kind of be my guide of what can I do today to get tomorrow, tomorrow being beginning of the school year in August, so many weeks from now, um, what can I do to, to prepare? Now, that kind of goes into my my next thing. If you are changing grades or if you're just coming into teaching or, um, you know, whatever, if this is your first year, you would probably benefit from getting your first week planned out now. Um, I just think that is going to help because if you wait until last minute, I think it will cause so much stress and anxiety. If it's your first time working at with this age or at the school there's a lot that you're going to have to piece together like the curriculum you're probably going to investigate what do the other teachers on this grade level do um what is specific to this age what do they like to do if you're new to it it's a lot of piecing together so i really highly suggest that's going to take a little bit of time you're probably going to have to put some being a lot of work and effort into that. Um, so I would do that now. There's a saying, um, eat your frogs first. Can't remember wherever I heard that from. Um, but it's a saying that I always remember when I'm thinking about my to-do list and priorities, I like to eat my frogs first. If you've not heard that phrase, allow me to introduce it to you. Um, basically, you do the big bad stuff first. The stuff that you're dreading most, do that first. Um, I really remember this and do this with like everything. And it's funny and weird and probably not really funny. But even when I come home from work, when I wasn't kidding when I said I do, I really do the, have this philosophy of getting things done today that's going to make my tomorrow easier. Um, and one of those things is when I, f I just have specific routines and things I like to do. So when I come home from work, the very first things that I like to do is get things washed that need to be washed, like my coffee cup that went home. Um, my daughter is 17. Um, she's a junior and she just recently started drinking coffee. Please, no judgment. She's drinking coffee and we're going to let that one go. Um, so I will actually wash my coffee cup and her coffee cup and um, and then also the actual coffee pot. But for me, the frog of the things that I need to get washed is the coffee pot um, and preparing the coffee pot. So that's the first thing I tackle because I know I've got all these things I need to do and get washed and prepare for tomorrow. So the eating my frog of all of that is washing the coffee pot and and preparing it for the following day. So I do that first. Then I go to our coffee cups. So I'm um, really not kidding when I say I I do that in almost everything. Um, but yeah, so you you wanna eat your, eat your frogs first. So the thing that's the hardest, the thing that you're really dreading, the thing you really don't wanna do, do not wait until last because believe me, it's like that thing that's still looming over you, you just feel so much better when you do that hard thing first. So um, if you don't have your first week planned out, that's a great starting place because really it's hard to do anything if, like really you are not gonna be able to do anything until you get that one piece done. So I would, I would start on that. Don't wait until a few weeks before school. I would just hash that thing out now, unless there really is something that's preventing you, like, well, I'm not gonna meet my my grade level, I'm not going to know my curriculum, I'm not going to know anything until X date. Well, then you can't really do anything except you can do something. You can investigate that grade level 
you know, go online, learn what you can now. Okay, so what is a great uh, management system to have in place? What do other teachers of this grade level do the first week of school? So even if you're limited, there are so many things that you can be doing that's going to help so that when you're ready, you already have some ideas in mind. Um, so you're already getting some of that hard work done. Just get the hard work done. Um, it just life is so much easier. I can't say anything more about that except do it. People do it. Um, okay. Moving on because I feel like I went, went over that for 10 years. Um, okay. If you have any special bulletin boards that you like to do, you know, make the copies, get the, if you have die cuts and stuff that are going up, I would also do that. Now, like I said, I like to use the all about me poster as our first real bulletin board, but, um, I'm going to have something displayed outside like a, you know, welcome to pre first or whatever. Um, so those are the things that I know I can do right now, getting things ready for my word wall. I can do that now. And it for me, it's relatively easy because I'll just kind of be using what I've used this year. But again, I need I have to take things down and off the walls because I don't know if they're painting. But um, in any case, I take them down. And so as I take them down, it's just a great time for me to look at them and say, oh, you know what? The letter C is looking a little sad. Let's redo that. Just anything that needs to be reviewed. Um, so that I can have it ready and clean and looking nice for next year. Um, other things, um, classroom libraries always just have to be reorganized. So what I actually do, and I don't know, maybe you guys have a better system of doing this more frequently, but at the end of the year, I have my kids, it's actually becomes like my reading groups. I have a group per every bin or a couple of bins and we just go through it and be like, oh, that's silly. This book says number two, which is um, animal fiction, I believe, in our classroom library, and it's in bin one. So hey, we're gonna put that in bin two, and I just have my kids do it. It's nice because it's kind of novel. Obviously, normally when we're working in reading groups, we're reading, but this is still incorporating reading. Well, I mean, it's incorporating books, not necessarily reading, um, but it's the end of the year, and it's them helping to reorganize the classroom, which I feel is important. They're part of the classroom. And they're definitely the reason why those book bins are no longer organized. So I feel like it's super appropriate um, to have them be part of that process. I think it's good. And the novelty, which they really need novel things at the end of the school year to survive. Let's face it, we all do. So it's just kind of a nice way. So I have them do that. Um, and you can have them do that also with like math organizations, it, you know, go through bins, uh, manipulatives, getting those things cleaned up and organized. Um, and that just ensures that all those things are ready and set for the following school year. Um, anchor charts and posters, this can be a little bit tricky to set up in advance. Um, although I'm going to explain how I like to do it in advance. <clears throat> but a lot of times we're creating these things with our students and we like them to see you know, we like them to see it as we create it. So one could argue, you know, I can't really get my anchor chart or poster ready. And if you fully feel that way, well, then don't get it ready because you're doing, you're creating it with your students. Um, but what you can get ready is just like the posters with the headings. Or what I usually do is there are certain things that I typically know is going to go on the anchor chart because my students will mention it or I make sure they mention it or we somehow discuss it. So I might print it out. Um, let me give you an example. Like I do the daily five and what modified I call the daily three. Um, and you know, I know every year I'm introducing read to self, partner reading, word work. So even though I may not have this on the poster or I may have it on the poster and not have the specific behaviors on it, I know there are things that they're going to be saying and that we're going to talk about, like work the whole entire time, find one place and stay, um, you know, you never finish. Things that I know we're always going to say, I can still have printed. Usually what I'll do is I might print it um, on like a sentence sheet and then add it 
to the poster or in times past I may cover up just have it pre-written on the poster and then keep it covered up and then as we mention it and learn about it remove it from the poster so then it's finally revealed to my kiddos and then in that way I'm doing what I can in advance to um, get the posters ready and anchor charts same thing <clears throat> I'm I'm clumping these together anchor charts really I do feel um, very much need to be created with the kids but the same idea applies there where you're probably you know certain things that are going on the anchor chart you could have a pre-written or or um, on a sentence strip or on the actual poster sheet and then revealed as you wish um, or just don't but you know if that's something you feel will help you then just do it um, okay and then the last little tidbit I've got one last thing is declutter 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 if you're not sure if you should give it away just ask yourself have I used this have I used this in like the last couple of months or the last six months or this year and I say that because you know there are certain concepts that maybe I haven't taught in six months because that's something we do at the beginning of the year and I don't really go back to it but just ask yourself is it something I use this school year for sure that's gonna be your test or is it just something that's hanging around um, and if your answer is no I, I haven't used it it at all this school year it's just kind of hanging around because one day I might then just get rid of it um, I kind of went through my room and saw like I have these coloring books I don't use coloring books I don't know do, we, do you guys use coloring books I don't use that it's not a thing I do um, so I'm gonna raffle it off to my kids just pull one of their one of their names and you know here you go I did that last year with a lot of things that were in my closet and um, raffled it off to the kids and it made their day and it made my day because it was just a win-win situation I got rid of stuff they were happy it was it was a very nice way to declutter and just get rid of things that I really did not need um, yeah so that's it you guys I guess I did keep it short um, so that that's you know just a few things and I I'm probably have I'm sure that I've missed some things but I just wanted to get everyone thinking you know I really do believe in this philosophy of what can I do today to make my life a little bit easier tomorrow and again I apply it in all things and I, I don't want to take credit for this because this is not I did not come up with this um, not that I'm sure anyone thought I did but um, I believe when I first started hearing reference to this it was Gretchen Rubin who I really really enjoy for her life hacks and you know she's always sharing things like what can you do to make life a little bit easier a little bit better a little bit happier um, and she there was an episode I remember that where she kind of talked about that you know what can I do to make my future self happy and that really has stuck with me and it's what I do in you know just all things that I can I'm sure I can do more with it but I really do a lot with it like I said on a daily basis even just my regular routine of coming home and preparing things for the following day um, but yeah I just think if you do this you're instead of procrastinating um, you're just gonna find that things can be easier and better for you all right well if there's something that you do um, that I haven't mentioned here I would love to hear from you um, you can tweet to me at Tammy J that's at T-A-M-I-J one two three I love hearing from you guys um, we will go quickly into my wins and fails segment of the week um, I think my big win for the week is that um, I'm really getting a lot done I just feel like you know I I tackled all of our end of year assessments I started at the beginning of May and like it took me a month pretty much um, but I just assessed instead of doing you know anytime I would normally be pulling and working with a small group I just assessed I was still teaching we go you know I teach whole group at the carpet and then we go off students work independently and I pull groups the whole last month I've just been pulling and doing 
writing records, assessing high frequency words, letter sounds, anything that students still needed to, to um, had it mastered yet, um, doing math benchmarks. Pretty much everything is done. I have one pending assessment and um, that's words their way, the spelling inventory. And I will be finished with that. I'm doing that this week on Tuesday and data has to be entered by Friday. So I've really staggered things and have been inputting the data as I go. So I don't have like all this data that I have to input at once. I didn't, you know, I just went a, a little at a time and I feel really good because I'm really coming to the end of that. So I'm feeling like I'm meeting my deadlines. I, I'm always, I'm someone who always meets my deadlines. Let's face it. It's just, um, just who I am. I, I don't, I'm not usually late unless I've like truly forgotten that something existed. Um, but yeah, typically I'm not going to miss my deadlines, but it just felt good staggering it and, um, getting things done. I do have a couple of other pending things like writing my end of year narratives. I'm about halfway, a little more than halfway finished. So that feels really good. Um, so yeah, so that's a big win. Um, I would say a big fail. I don't know. I don't really have any big fails this week. Um, I think my only fail is I need to, I need to get in the shower like now. I think our guests are supposed to allegedly supposed to be here in like six minutes. Um, but I live in Mexico and if you know anything about the Mexican culture, they're not punctual. So <laughs> this is not a criticism. This is actually a compliment. It's, it works out very well in times like this. So, um, you can kind of be running late and you won't be seen as rude. You're just kind of, you fit in very well with the culture. Um, so if that's my fail, I guess that's my fail, but it's, it's okay. Um, so that's it, you guys. Thank you so much for joining me. I know there are so many options when it comes to podcast consumption. I just thank you for taking your time to listen to me today. So that's it. Until next time. Wait a minute. Wait one minute. Before you go, don't forget you can catch your show notes online at www.timetoteach.libsyn. That's L-I-B-S-Y-N dot com. We're also on Facebook at Time to Teach. Don't forget to check out our Facebook group, Teachers for Effective Curriculum. And if you're an educator with your own podcast show, I invite you to join our brand new Facebook group, Teachers Who Podcast. Let's grow a community where we can network, problem solve, and discuss anything and everything podcast related. I'll see you there.